Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Chemileski, a physician practicing in Central New York. This video is a series of osteopathic manipulative medicine techniques that I've used since 2009 to treat various viral and bacterial respiratory disorders, especially influenza. In fact, I call it the influenza protocol. Uh, modifications can be used for sore throats, bronchitis, bronchopneumonia, and so forth. I became interested in this about 2009 when, uh, as a guest lecturer, uh, <clears throat> I was introduced to Dr. Dennis Dowling, who was talking about the bird flu at that time in 2009, the H1N1 flu. And he introduced me to a series of osteopathic manipulative medicine techniques, or OMM, that were used way back in 1918, during the pandemic that killed 50 to 100 million people worldwide. Nowadays, we do have various antibiotics, viral antibiotics and so forth, uh, to treat influenza and the complications of that. They didn't have that in 1918 or 19. In those days, you had osteopathic hospitals and MD or allopathic hospitals. And insurance records show that using these techniques at that time, the H1N1 flu in 1918, which was the same virus that was here in 2009, were treated differently. Uh, the MDs had their hospitals and uh, they had a certain mortality rate, the DOs or osteopathic physicians. They had a 1 40th of the mortality that the MDs had in their hospitals. And they were using these supportive techniques to help people to breathe, clear secretions, and to stimulate their immune system. So these techniques, which I call influenza protocol, uh, I am introducing uh, to the public for you to look at and to research and to see if there is effectiveness with our modern uh, viral illnesses that we have. We recently uh, had the SARS virus. Now uh, people are concerned about the uh, coronavirus coming out of China. And uh, what I'm suggesting is that techniques, uh, techniques such as these might uh, be of use in these types of infections. Um, this is not to supplant normal medical procedures such as the uh, vaccinations, of which we do not have for coronavirus, uh, antiviral medicines for which we do not have medicines at the present time. Uh, but these techniques are effective uh, either alone for influenza uh, or with medications uh, such as uh, Tamiflu, Relenza, and others. Protocol. Um, <clears throat> I've already examined the patient. I've gotten the history from the patient, uh, as every good physician does, and we've discussed the treatment, and it seems there are no contraindications. Uh, he doesn't have any uh, rib fractures or recent trauma. I've checked for swollen glands and swelling or tenderness in the liver and the spleen, and he doesn't have any of those things. So I'm going to proceed now to the influenza protocol. So the first thing I'm going to do is have the patient turn his head to the side so he doesn't cough on me. And David, if you put your hands up on the chest. And what I'm going to do is <coughs> rock the chest at about a 45 degree angle, about two times every second. And I'm going to follow along with his breathing rhythm. So, David, if you could take a deep breath in and let it out. And as he does that, I compress a little bit, take another deep breath. I ease up on the pressure, but I follow it. And I follow as he exhales, as he inhales. What I'm doing is I'm imparting a vibration of the mucus in the lungs there let the air out, and that's called succussation. Now I'm going to press and hold the ribs down, take a deep breath, and just like taking a cork out of a bottle, the air will come in, and often the patients will start to cough. And I'll do that a couple of times. I'll just do a couple of cycles here quickly. So take a deep breath in, let it out. Take a deep breath in, let it out. And as I hold the ribs down, take a deep breath, like that, okay? David, could you lay on your left side, please? <clears throat> Some people uh, may have a little difficulty with that. Uh, <clears throat> and in that case, sometimes to hold the shoulder, and then with your fingers to do a massaging or a rib-raising type technique. 
that will give pretty much the same results. So what I'm doing is holding the shoulder here and bringing it back as I rock the ribs towards me and having a pulling motion away so it looks like this. And you do that on both sides. And that will help to open up the airways and move the uh, sputum that's collected in the chest and also increase venous and lymphatic drainage from the chest. Could you get on your back please? The second part because of congestion in places like the throat, in the glands, in the sinuses, uh, we want to get venous and lymphatic drainage from the head and the neck into the what I call the central core or the chest and the heart. So in the neck area I'm going to use the flat of my thumb and go down through the anterior lymphatic chain right over by that muscle that we use to turn our necks with and I call it a J maneuver. So I'm going to come down and then across the clavicle. So it's going to be down and across the clavicle like that. Okay, And it's just a light pressure. I'm not pressing real hard. And I might do that about five times. That's the anterior lymphatic chain. Over here is the posterior lymphatic chain uh, <coughs> in the side and back of the neck. And again, I use my thumb or I might use this side of my hand, for example, like this in a sweeping motion. And I would do the same thing on the other side. The anterior J maneuver down the neck and uh, over the, the just above the clavicle about five times and then with my thumb over here on the neck or using my hand making a sweeping motion. The next thing I want to do for congestion in the sinuses here in the frontal and maxillary sinuses is to take my thumbs and lightly do a massage technique from the forehead to what's called the tragus, that little piece of uh, skin in the front of the ear, uh, ear canal. And so I lightly do the massage and then I go to the infraorbital area here on either side and with the tips of my fingers gently start here and then have the flat of my thumbs as again I go to that point, the tragus, on the anterior part of the ear. So it looks like this. So tip of the thumb to the flat of the thumb. Tip of the thumb to the flat of the thumb. And I do that again about five times each. Then I do a thing called tapotma or tapping and you tap the sinuses here. The same thing down here. And that again is a form of succussation similar to what we did in the chest there to loosen up the um, uh, the mucus that's collected in the sinuses there so they can drain properly. Moving over to the next portion of the body, <clears throat> we have the liver pump and the spleen pump. I've already checked to make sure that there's no tenderness or pain in the rib cage down here and there's no swelling or tenderness of the liver or the spleen. The ribs, what they do is they, um, when you exhale, they come down at about 30-40 degrees. So I'm going to have one hand over the top uh, in the back and one hand here on the ribs and I'm going to have a gentle motion like this, not up and down but at about a 30-40 degree angle. Okay, The left hand goes up and the right hand goes down and it looks like this. And I'm doing that about two times a second. And I'll do that about, oh, about 40 times. Okay. I will then come over to this side and it's a similar situation but now I'm going to have my right hand underneath the patient here. The other one's going to be on top but again the motion is about 30 to 40 degrees this way. So it's not just straight up and down. Now this will uh, cause the blood that's been collected uh, in the liver and the spleen to spew out white blood cells throughout the body, the circulation. That's been shown in people who have had, in humans who have had pneumonia, that you can just about double the white blood cell count by doing this technique. Now, I'm going to come down to the legs here, and this is simple effleurage. 
where we're opening up the lymphatic and venous channels. We do this about oh, 10 times on each side or so. And I get ready now to do what's called uh, Dalrymple's pedal pump or the pedal pump. So with the shoes off, I have the feet over here and I'm basically rocking the feet up and down. When I do that, that stretches the lower legs as well as the hamstrings and back and stretches the feet as well. So you get a return of venous and lymphatic drainage uh, into the central uh, uh, circulation and back to the heart and the lungs. The other things that's really important with this, if you take a look at the abdomen, uh, I'm jiggling the intestines there. Now that's important for a number of reasons. Uh, when I jiggle this, what happens is I'm stimulating the GALT white blood cells, gastrointestinal associated lymphoid tissue, GALT. I call these guys the Delta Force. They have been <coughs> fighting off bacteria in the intestines nonstop. So now when I do this jiggling using the feet, millions of these commandos, if you will, are spewed out into the general circulation. Part of their job is to look for viruses, bacteria, foreign protein, and toxins. So what I've done is I've augmented the liver and spleen pump with this foot pump now. And again, it's been shown that you at least double the white blood cell count in the body. This whole treatment takes, as you saw, about five to six minutes at the most. Um, <clears throat> A lot of times when people have different viral disorders or bronchitis or bronchopneumonia or walking pneumonia, stuff like that, depending on whether or not they need an antibiotic, I will supplement that with this influenza protocol. I can also do variations of this when people have simple sinus infections or sore throats or even ear infections. I do some other additional techs on there, uh, techniques on there, but I basically wanted to focus on the influenza protocol using osteopathic manipulative medicine. Thank you.